What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? We're over here at the uh, Paleocrat channel today because um, I cleared all my history. So usually I can set up one of these Meeting of Catholic streams and I had to log into some bank thing <clears throat> and it wasn't working. Um, so I called customer service and they said, clear all your history and your cash and whatever cash. There's a pun in there for banks. And, um, and I deleted, it was like a week ago. I haven't made a mini Catholic stream in probably a couple months. Cause usually Tim sets it up, but he's indisposed today and, uh, go to log in this morning. I can't do it. And whatever. It's a whole thing. It's a whole <laughs> one of them. YouTube yeah. Google things yeah. came and, to the uh, rescue though, man. Paleo crap channel. Mm -hmm. yeah you did you want, <laughs> everyone you, on my channel is like what is this <laughs> they're, watching, you, uh, they're, they're so used to watching my son's minecraft memes they're like i don't even know what this show is about <laughs> three grown-ups the uh, twitter right uh jerry bear do you want to do you want to post yeah. that we're on the here on the on the he twitter? does yeah i do the i definitely twitter. i yeah. definitely want to post yeah on twitter do that yeah my and by Make the way my son's gonna kill me i said he shares minecraft memes he's like i'm a gamer yeah, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's a meme lord a little bit, but he's a gamer. So, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll share that right now, man. So, uh, what's going on with you, Jake? Oh, not much. We got part 11 coming up for my series on church history. And I'm, I'm blazing through a couple of books in my lazy chair over on the other side of the room here to try to get some more, mm, I guess you could say material. It's not really like gathering material, but just getting my head right so that I can do some more theology as well as history. But other than that, uh, I had a little scare with the baby this week, last mm -hmm. week, I should say, ended up in the hospital. Uh, for those who don't know, my daughter has uh, a liver condition. She was born with what's called biliary atresia. So her uh, gallbladder is basically not there. They had to remove it, what, what was left of it, and her liver doesn't function quite so well. Mm -hmm. So any little infection or, or illness is, it has to be taken seriously. So anyhow, four days in the hospital and now we're home doing uh, IV antibiotics and stuff like that. But I mean, all okay. things considered, you know, we're blessed. We, we, we are, she, she's doing fine. And the other children are, are healthy and just happy we're home. How many? So, uh, how about you? Well, oh, we've have... got... I did not have sorry, quite go ahead. a, sorry, go on. Sorry, what were you saying? You were saying how many, I Children. anticipated your, ah, yes, seven. Really? Yes. Dude, I'm amateur. I only have, I'm, we're expecting number five. C congratulations, bro. Oh, that's like, that's like minor leagues, man. Yeah, I know. I got to, oh, well. <laughs> you know what, though? My wife just went to a, uh, a I wrote an article oof, back before, like, it was like read by 30 people. Um on some word what is it weebly i made like a weebly website blog i can't remember what it was called this is before i was a, a professional writer about um how it was uh we we thanks be to god we haven't had an issue getting pregnant and and whatever um mm -hmm. basically as soon as i started taking the faith seriously like seven years ago we had a kid like we've had we're, we'll have had five kids and basically since the first one was born six years ago <laughs> So we haven't, oh, nice. uh, we haven't, you know, since we started living right, it hasn't been an issue. Um, not because we deserve it. And that was kind of my point with this article I wrote a while back is um, there was a propensity amongst Catholics to view uh, family size as holiness, you know, mm -hmm. um, obviously, yes, it means open to life and that's a good thing. Um, but uh so it's not as if uh, I, I I just hate whenever I make comments like that. Someone who's having issues with fertility will say, "Well, that's not really fair." Um, so if I did that, I apologize to anybody. Um, yeah, we mean no offense. No, folks. no. And well, to be you honest, do, I you know, don't. you do. <laughs> I don't. You know. <laughs> well, Jeremiah, really. I mean, this is his channel, but it's his fault, um, really. <laughs> um, the uh, in yeah. in my experience, the folks with fewer kids have more virtue, and I think the reason that sleep. God has. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an inverse relationship, right? It's God's like, yeah. this guy needs patience. How am I going to give him patience? Well, let me give him a gaggle of children to, so he can uh -huh. learn to be patient. That's right. You know, this, this guy needs to be more understanding. He needs to be, you know, so it's, it's almost like, like oh you know, goodness. you need, you need something to make you better where someone who's already better doesn't need it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> something like that. That's right. Some of the, the holiest people I know, they have like two children and not, not for lack uh -huh. of trying, you know, they, they've been candid with me in the past. Yeah. Like, 
we've we wanted to have more kids we we um you know sought medical uh, advice to make sure nothing was wrong and all this mm-hmm. stuff it's like just wasn't in god's plan and i'm thinking to myself well <clears throat> probably probably because you're already on the right track and you know this is this is my my training as it were but my uh anyhow my wife was at a re- uh, conference like a passion like getting ready for easter recently and and the priest was talking about Mary and how she only had one child <laughs> and his name is Jesus. And, um, you know, so it was, he was giving some sort of, uh, not warning, but like context of, you know, um, there's a lot of reasons why we do or do not have kids and so on and so forth. In any case, we're not here to talk about fertility. Um, although this is a relatively fertile bunch because I know Jeremiah is ex- the six or seven coming or just did or whatever i don't can't remember anyway so um we're here to talk about something that will make us a lot of friends uh and it's about so many so many friends (laughs) uh apparitions phony apparitions and um you know false revelations and or uh, private revelations and so forth before we do Because I assume what we'll do is we'll record it on this channel, and then I think you can actually download it and put it up on on, on Tim's channel. We can do that later or something. But um, so a uh, few things I want to contextualize. First of all, um, there are apparitions that are orthodox but not approved. So um, like Our Lady of America, I think it was called. Um, that was endorsed by Cardinal Burke, if I'm not mistaken, uh, because it seemed like it would be approved. And then I think it was last year, it kind of the hammer came down and said, you know what, it's not of supernatural origin or we can't distinguish or we can't establish. But apparently, nothing. because I talked to people who were into the apparition, nothing in the apparition seemed phony at all. It seemed very Marian and so forth. And and uh, it might not be "quote unquote" phony, which we'll get to. We're going to go through some stuff here from Father William Most, an amazing Catholic theologian, um, uh, because it, it can be that somebody does have something like interior locutions or something like that, um, but it's not an apparition per se. Okay, so uh, again, it could be completely theologically orthodox. So we're not saying, you know, <laughs> uh, everyone. Like I've had moments in prayer, um, you know, where I'm like, man, I think I just, I think that was an angel or something like, I mean, things like that happen right. in your life. We're not saying right. if you haven't, um, you know, gone through a 20 year period of, you know, consulting with your superior and your convent and so forth. And it's been, you know, through di- diocesan tribunals that somehow there's no proof you had any supernatural experience. That's not what we're saying at all. Um, so don't take this as, um, the radical traticals saying that no one except we're not like what are the well, Jeremiah you would know what are those um what's the that radical of, traticals yeah. <laughs> what's that That's scream good. of the Baptist Jeremiah that believe like no miracles have happened since like the year one hundred or something like that what's that called well I mean you would have like MacArthur's so, like that yeah he's he's a cessationist that's right that's right yeah yeah <clears throat> we're not those but it's not it's not miracles it, that's like tongues like that's like okay. the, yeah yeah but. Yeah. It's about as close as you're going to get. <laughs> yeah. Right. So we're not saying that, um, again, we're not being like, it's just because it's not approved. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. That's not the point. Um, when we're talking about phony apparitions and so forth, what we mean is uh, stuff that you kind of discern the spirit of the thing, which we'll talk about from Father Most. And after it's been through a process um, and been deemed not to be uh, approved, then there's still a uh, there's still a, a cultus around it, and it gets a little bit fishy. There's a few of those out there like that. Um, yeah, and before we get into that, any comments, concerns, etc. About about talking about this topic, <laughs> I'm not concerned. No, yeah, no, it's no, we're good, man. I was actually I was just looking up stuff recently because I was in a stream, and there was there were these I thought they were bots. Um, they were just people probably using Restream or something. I don't know. I don't know how they were doing this, but uh, they were sharing these wild-eyed end times type stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and just totally coming at the church, but they were claiming to be Catholic. And I was like, okay. So click on it, 
And it's this, it's this uh, person. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see if I have the person's name. Um, it's like she's basically a, um, she's she, she used to work as a medium in England, and Great. so she, yeah, she worked with a medium in England who like it's taught not her this stuff. At all. I know, yeah. Um, and I, I'll, I'll have to look it up because I have it in the, I have it in my my watch history on YouTube. Um, but basically the, she was making all these crazy claims and there was a lot of people kind of around and a lot of traditional people. In fact, a lot of individuals doing rosaries about this. Um, and they, you know, they're wearing the mantilla, they're very traditional, um, everything else. And come to find out the lady is a total hoax. People ended up investigating, finding out who she was. They totally outed her. I think there was a book written about her. And she's since gone into hiding. She won't, <laughs> she won't even show her face right now. She's gone. She's mm. just banished. And so, but people are still to this day saying, oh no, it's true. It's true. <laughs> and you're like, wow. And so I, I was just looking that up. And then I was also recently uh, looking up stuff about, uh, I have a buddy, you know, that we, you know, we go back quite a ways in fact. Uh, and he was, he used to be part of this thing called Holy Love, uh, ecumenical ministry and shrine. And it's, uh, it's one of those, it's one of those situations where, <laughs> you know, the, the you start reading some of the some of the claims and right away you're kind of at least my spidey senses went off. <laughs> I was like, I don't know about this. And the church investigated it and the bishop said, no way, Jose, this is bad news. Told people not to go that it wasn't Catholic. So they made an ecumenical thing um, mm -hmm. not under that. And they posted canon law. Uh, the church then said, we strongly discourage anybody from associating with this. And they started just going off the rails. And, you know, now, even if you go to the website now, it's, uh, let me see here, it's holylove.org. And if you go, the one of the um, first letters of endorsement and approbation, uh, they have one letter of approbation from a Bishop Roman da uh, Danielak, uh, titular mm -hmm. Bishop of Nyssa. But then you've got one here uh, to Holy Love Ministries, Archbishop Stanley Monahan from and this is all you need to know the eastern right of the mother of god russian church um oh yeah they do the latin yeah. mass in i believe english and archbishop stanley it's a real Monaghan, thing is it what is that thing that's a yeah it's a real thing i'll show you i'll pull it up and i don't mean you know as i said i got a, I got have a friend uh who's actually involved with this but he also asked me what i what i thought about it and so let me go ahead and, and share it here on the screen so people can see um yeah share screen and we will do this window oh no nope. chrome tab there we go so let me go to holy love ministries uh letter of endorsement okay so this here is um <laughs> yeah let's see here so this here is can you guys see it mm -hmm. okay this is this is obviously like what is this like a, a kind of like the Polish National Church or something like it's some offshoot weird thing. Yeah, well, it's basically this guy, the guy with the white hair. That's Archbishop Stanley Monahan, uh, Santa Maria Rosa Mystica Catholic Church. Um, the last I knew, he his claim is that he was made an archbishop by. In fact, I don't even know if he said he was made an archbishop by this individual, but he was made a bishop. I don't know how he went from that to. Archbishop, maybe just by default, but he, um, cause it's only him. It's only his church. That's it. Um, but he was made a Bishop in fact, by Athanasius and by Athanasius, I mean, St. Athanasius. Um, oh, okay. and so yeah. it's yeah. one of those. So this <laughs> individual, that's the, that's the first, um, that's the first, <laughs> um, uh, approbation or the first endorsement on the website is from this guy, but it makes it sound like it's a totally 100% legit thing. Like, oh, it's an archbishop. And then you have to kind of investigate a little bit mm -hmm. to, to get a little deeper in there. Because it's not going to say that on there. You know, it's not going to say, oh, by the way, this is a little bit loon tune. Um, and by little mean a lot. But so they're not doing that. So you have to actually do the legwork yourself. So it's actually, it's actually tricky stuff going on with this. And I guess the, the shrine, I don't know tons and tons about it. So I don't want to speak as if I do. But it, it seems as though, um, you know, by ecumenical, it really is like bringing in people. You can be a member of the confraternity and doesn't matter, 
even what religion i don't think as long as you very good make certain claims about our lady or something <laughs> and it, it, you can be rastafarian i guess i don't know but um yeah so i was looking at this stuff so yeah i'm not i'm not afraid to talk about this it's right up my alley man <laughs> yeah. see that that yeah. kind of points to the that's dangerous it's misleading to people i mean especially if you don't really know you know the principles that kennedy's going to lay out here in a second um not everybody's aware of these and you go to a website and you're like man this looks legit here's an archbishop signing off on it okay sweet you know hey that's by my house i should make a pilgrimage there next thing you know you're caught up in all this loopy stuff so it's church approval and, and, and obedience to the magisterium in this regard is key for the lay faithful because like i said most people don't have the ability to discern spirits the way priests do or the ordinary of the diocese does you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah it's um it's it's messy and this is why you know obviously everyone knows i'll i'll die on that lefevrian hill if i'm forced to um but uh this is an area where i would never i can't say never because maybe like i don't know maybe maybe there was some issue of world peace and we we're sure the blessed mother came and and for some reason the bishop well, i don't know but even then that's super dicey because none of this is they like none of this matters de fide so you know it could be so i should get into the father most stuff so um i have heard before i heard from father ripperger um i don't know if he didn't cite it i just heard it in one of his talks one time i think it was from him that the local bishop is given a special charism for the office is, has a special charism for discerning an apparition father most says that it's not necessarily infallible i think uh, technically like a bishop could be wrong in his assessment i think but it doesn't matter is the point because it does uh whether or not a, a particular apparition is true is nothing about you going to heaven obviously i believe fatima is like insanely important and it's kind of like is it a private revelation? It's kind of like not just a private revelation, obviously, because the public miracle of the sun and that sort of stuff. Okay, fine. But nonetheless, like if you did, if you don't believe the same thing about uh, Fatima or the consecration of Russia, it does not endanger your soul outside of maybe you had a hardness of heart or something. That's its own thing. But I'm just saying if you had a different opinion about um, the, uh, the aspects of an apparition that has nothing to do with going to heaven because it's not part of the positive faith. You know, if the apparition happens 2000 years after Christ, clearly for 2000 years, people could go to heaven without believing that thing. Therefore it's not necessary right. to believe it to be saved. It's that simple. So even if you were like a, even if your Bishop was totally a unfortunate fella and like, it seemed like he made the wrong call or something like that, it wouldn't matter for your salvation is what I'm saying. So it's, it's worth just completely deferring the normal channels of operation with these things because it's not worth the risk so uh father most he wrote something called private revelations and the discernment of spirits and I, we're talking about this because i did a video on my other on my own channel uh, last week there was this alleged apparition of john paul ii showing up to a nun in spain um and he magically just made it very clear that benedict stole the pope and all this kind of stuff it was very very on the nose and people, a lot of traditionalists were sharing it and were kind of like, ah, oh, this might be true. And uh, I was like, <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not. It's not true at all. And here's why. <laughs> and um, so first thing, I'm not going to read this whole thing. It's a lot. It's uh, Father Most, if people don't know, is an incredible theologian. He wrote, uh, I have a book on my shelf about his Latin, the natural way me method. He's, he's a Latin expert. Uh, he also is a huge expert on Mariology. And he wrote incredible stuff about co-redemptrix. He's kind of like an authority on that. I had to cite him for an article once, and I was blown away with the stuff that he has. And then also, he's just great on on this everything to do with private revelations. So he quote he quotes Saint John of the Cross, who uh, we could kind of call him like the doctor of mystical theolo theology in the church. Like he's kind of like maybe the biggest maybe the biggest name there as far as that's concerned. He's a doctor of the church, and he was a mystic. Um, and he actually says, um, hmm, uh, he, he reproves anyone who desires to be the recipient of a vision or a revelation. That doesn't mean that if, uh, that if you want to see God or something, that that's bad. That's not what he's saying. Um, 
but he's but he's saying this is a problem because faith holds on without seeing and this is what saint paul tells us so if we look at approved revelations that have the test of time like fatima lords whatever there's always a resistance towards it um, and we see this in the bible too you know it's like whoa why are you coming to me you know what are you doing with whether it's an angel or something like that um because there's a humility involved and faith is without seeing you don't need to see to believe sort of thing um so he actually reproves that and then saint Teresa of avila who was basically his counterpart um she actually says, I, I will only warn you that when you learn or hear that God is granting souls these graces, some alleged revelation or something, you must never beg or desire him to lead you by this road. <laughs> Even if you think it is a very good one, there are certain reasons why such a course is not wise. Those reasons being almost always, I think it's always, to be honest, unless you're already in a cloistered convent or something like that, pretty much always your life is followed by suffering and tragedy and difficulty, um, persecution and so forth. Um, and in addition, uh, there's a massive weight of responsibility put on somebody's shoulder if it's a real apparition. You know, I think of poor Sister Lucy, you know, one of the reasons why I argue that the consecration was valid from her writings and stuff. But when I was going through her writings, you know, there were, con there were complexities there. There were things where here you said that, there you said that. I don't blame Sister Lucy for that at all. The poor woman just should not have been put on the mic under the microscope uh, by everyone's different camp about what it would mean for 75 years, you know, or mm -hmm. almost 90 years because she was 87 years or whatever after the apparition to the time she died. Um, what a terrible uh, weight and uh, burden that would have been for her her whole life. Um, so that's basically the basis of um, private revelations in general, why people shouldn't desire them. Um, and pursue after them. Pursue after them. Yeah, right. You know, like it's it, like it's one thing to say, you know, wow, what what an amazing thing, you know. Yeah. Imagine being that because a lot of saints have right. experienced these kind of remarkable things. Yeah. But if that's not tempered by what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. Like to also fear and tremble a little bit at the mm -hmm. idea of that, and to say, wow, um, <laughs> I don't envy this <laughs> a little bit, you know, because you know it's gonna be it's gonna be rough. And but yet you have so many people, especially in times of great trouble, it seems like mm -hmm. times of great trouble, uh, times where, you know, there's worldliness all around within and without and everything that uh, there's this desire to not only to to find those things, to search for them right all over the place, like treasure, treasure hunters in a way, uh, but even to want them yourself. And I think that even leaves you susceptible. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're you'd be more susceptible to that kind of mischief uh from from hell <laughs> when you're when you're in that state and not even just that i mean sometimes just some people what they convince themselves they've seen or heard um so i don't just want to say everybody you know that's kind of thinking and wondering that's a demoniac or something but at the same time you open yourselves up to that and and that's especially especially troubling yeah that's, i think that's one of the that. things that's right that's right father most points out that if you are seeking it you're more likely to believe that something that happened to you was the real deal whereas it it may be your imagination it may be uh you misremembered it may be demonic for that matter you know so these apparitions that don't enjoy um the approval of the church it's like well if you constantly seeking after them and going from the next to the next to the next because it confirms I mean, maybe you want Benedict to be Pope. And here's mm -hmm. a, a, an alleged apparition that, that John Paul II says that he is. Mm -hmm. You want to believe that, so you'd be led astray by that well before it's been investigated, it's been tested. And, you know, these are the, again, this is the dangerous kind of things that if you're not careful because you're desiring it, like you said, you're, you're looking for it. Maybe you weren't the recipient but you're pursuing it in that way, vicariously, perhaps. Here's mm -hmm. uh real quick, just because I mentioned it a moment ago. Um, let me go ahead and put the tab up here for this. It would be, yeah. So this is the person I'm talking about uh, right here. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, mm -hmm. Maria divine mercy. Okay. So Maria divine mercy. Let's see here. Let me get back to the thing. Very original. Yeah, It man. says the last and only prophet <laughs> revealing the book of truth predicted in the book of Daniel 
which deciphers the book of John. <laughs> so, so you you know, this is, this is the thing and it, and it right there, but look, it's got, uh, uh, Robert Bellarmine right there. It's got uh, a Pope who's a manifest heretic. So automatically you're right in the, you're right in the world of this, the warning second coming.com. Okay. So it's, it's, you know, it's got the, the whole, uh, 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 National Enquirer feel, you know, the star magazine in the checkout lane feel to the whole thing. And so it's, but it's so much of what she was saying was feeding into that. And if you're already in that zone, you're already in that mode of <laughs> your, your brain is and your heart is, you may be susceptible to that. And in believing that that might lead you in, in, you know, in a curious way to be all of a sudden embracing some of the ascetic disciplines of it including certain prayers and rosaries done for the intentions of this yeah and then on top of that you have others surrounded in that world like like the archbishop quote unquote, we talked about earlier that you may you may get involved with this and decisions that that person makes that you're not even you don't even realize yet so you've already w w even just by desiring it and being willing to find yourself in a place where that would be like man that sounds like a legit site i should go to you know or that sounds like something i'm down with I see this around me that because you've already started in that, that place with that disposition, you found yourself susceptible to multiple layers of deception. Mm -hmm. And some of those that get you doing uh, religious practices that would otherwise be good. And, and, and how subtle of a, of a trick is that? I mean, the devil's all about the subtlety. So you say the subtlety of that is that you're praying a rosary and you're doing it for the intentions and you're doing it in the structure and order that this seer is talking about, thinking that you're combating the evil of the world, <laughs> the evil of the world and all the, the apostasy in the church. And then come to find out the lady's a medium. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> it's right. not even a real name. Like, you know, and so you got to be especially careful. Mm -hmm. yeah. It. Uh, it's funny you mentioned like people start praying rosaries for things. One of the consistent replies when you try to say, hey, that apparition is probably not true or it's definitely not true. And it's like, what about all the good fruit? All the people praying rosaries. And um, well, life is kind of a mystery. People do a lot of things for a lot of different reasons. <laughs> uh, just because you, you know, <laughs> yeah. if you if, if if you believe something about something, of course you'll react in a certain way. And if you are trying to be Catholic, then you'll do Catholic things. But just because you believe that thing about a thing doesn't mean that necessarily that thing is true. That's that's kind of a base. That's a very basic philosophy one hundred one, logic one hundred one. Um, and uh, but also one of the one other things that uh, is worth noting is um, this is from Father Most, and he's citing some uh, I don't know. This is a selection of his book, so he's probably got the full name somewhere else. But Poulain, Graces of Interior Prayer, anyway. He thinks that at least three fourths of the revelations given to those who have not reached high sanctity are illusions. And he also says, and there are many cases known of illusions, even in canonized saints. So St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross are quite prudent in their advice concerning privately, um, uh, concerning privately revealed things. Um, okay. So, and that makes sense. You know, this is why I, uh, I have much love for, many folks in the charismatic renewal it's kind of how i came back into the church um but there's a massive insistence in that movement of signs and wonders um you know so and so has been anointed you know that sort of thing now there are certain people that are extremely serious in it who i, I don't know i don't even know if they really are charismatic but they sort of just kind of stay in that world because it's the only serious thing going on in their life you know like they um <clears throat> I don't know. That's all our conversation, but, but, uh, but I used to be there for a couple of years. I was never, you know, I never asked for the gift of tongues or anything like that. Um, and did you speak in tongues though? No, I never did. You never did. I was going to no. say, I can't even imagine Kennedy Hall with his hands raised, man, praying and, and crying. No. <laughs> in a worse there are people service. trying to get me he's, to he's like waving you know. a banner, a felt banner. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I was spent... the Pentecostal two step at the front. <laughs> I never, so I never, uh, <clears throat> oh. Oh. Oh, it okay. was charismatic <laughs> renewal stuff, oh. uh, but it was through folks associated with renewal ministries, so like Ralph Martin and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were super pious and like 
Marian and very Catholic, it, you know, in, in a very aesthetic sense. So it would be like, you know, uh, Eucharistic adoration, but with like a praise and worship band and like people like freestyle praying in front of the Eucharist and things. Now I'm whole, like, I can't even imagine <laughs> being there. Free uh, down. Down. I the can't visuals. Even Rather uh, the, the visuals of the freestyle praying like i never i didn't know what rapping you know. but yeah <laughs> but but th but that's the thing you find a lot of people who go through the charismatic renewal that end up becoming traditionalists because they're really just like they're at it like you know they have an experience and whatever and they're like hey, god's real what do i do about this and then like at their parish the only serious people are the charismatics who they you know charismatics have supernatural faith so <clears throat> they're looking for serious people so you find them and that's where they are but you just continually study and stuff like that and you sort of find yourself in a different path right um but that's in the charismatic renewal there is a big insistency on certain unapproved apparitions mm -hmm. one in particular from croatia and um mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody yeah. was asking about that. Yeah, somebody I may as well. I'm, chat. Well, let's let's before we even yeah, mention what it is. <laughs> I, where, I'm not mentioning like, it. Well. I, it's, I didn't mention this. <laughs> let's go through the things. So it's, this is what I. It's like let's go through the aspects of what would make it dubious, and then say do those apply? So the one is three quarters, according to this, or three quarters that are to people who basically are not living in a state of grace. That's basically what it means, uh, or that type of person are probably false well look at the lives of the seers of various apparitions and yeah. see how they turn out if they are priests that leave the priesthood and start doing things like selling ouija board items which has happened with a particular apparition in croatia or if there's consistent disobedience of two or three bishops in a row or if it might be a lie and they were out trying to buy cigarettes and didn't want to tell the truth about it uh, or if you know uh it turns into a Joel Olstein operation and it's like you know you look up you look up statues from this place and it's like this statue is fourteen hundred dollars because it's it like touched the spot or something that's insane that's insane yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um so that's one thing now what about this there is St. John of a Cross these are five causes of error in Revelation so er, uh, faulty interpretations of visions by a recipient this is actually huge and as a bug, I'm going to do a video on my channel about it to make more friends. Um, <laughs> yeah. This applies to real revelations, though. Um, a lot of traditional Catholics are really absorbed with private revelation. There's nothing yeah. wrong with private revelation when it's approved. It can be extremely edifying. People like to read Catherine Emmerich leading up to the Passion, for example, and she has meditations on that. That's wonderful. That's base. Mel Gibson basically used her visions to make the movie. Um uh, Mary of Agrita, incredible, you know, the city of God and, and whatever, the mystical city of God, whatever it's called. I mean, wonderful things in there that fill in a lot of mis mysterious imagery for us that help us to meditate more clearly on some of the great aspects of Mary and Jesus's life. And that's an incredible thing. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. However, we have no idea. Sometimes the visionary has no idea about what is literal truth in their vision and what is metaphor. Mm -hmm. so one that keeps coming up where people say no the the consecration of russia by pope francis whoever couldn't have been couldn't have been true couldn't have been true because of this revelation and it's the one by uh blessed something aiello i always forget the first name and uh it's basically an a revelation that rome will be taken over by russia and they'll, they'll plant the red flag on top of the vatican and italy will have much to suffer because of its impurities and people are people are convinced that it has to be a literal militaristic takeover of Rome, if anything less, and it's not the real thing. Um, they're convinced of that because it has that imagery to it. The thing is, though, this apparition is from before the Second Vatican Council. What do we see in the 1960s? We see the Russian Orthodox bishops who were just implanted by the KGB are invited to the council, and communism wins in that sense, uh, because uh, they, the council fathers are basically told not to talk about communism at the council. It's a victory for the Soviet Union in the, in the metaphorical sense. They plant their flag on Russia or on the Vatican. Um, and then Italy descended into, if you've ever lived in Italy, um, they have hardcore pornography on television after 10 o'clock at night. 
not softcore. They have the hardcore crazy stuff. Um, Berlusconi, who was uh, he was like Trump. He was like Italy's Trump, except more of a reprobate. Um, and uh, he was the prime minister, president back and forth for a long time. That's Italy politics is insane. Uh, he owned a bunch of these private channels. Italy, you cannot go to a variety store without seeing a pornographic magazine on the shelf. There's no covering of it. Italy has suffered from its impurity to a degree which is um, in some, it's it's indescribable, the amount of impurity that they've suffered in the last 40 years in that country. Um, and uh, so in my opinion, that apparition could totally be interpreted metaphorically. Communism basically had a victory at the Second Vatican Council. And so in a metaphorical sense, the flag of Russia March, they marched on Rome and 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 the KGB bishops got them not to talk about it right. and they planted their flag and 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 then Italy suffered greatly for their impurity and, and had a vocations crisis and that's where we are today that's one app that's my point is that's a totally legitimate interpretation of it it doesn't have to be a militaristic thing um so that's an approved one is my point and that will lead people to a certain set of no it has to be this way otherwise nothing else makes sense and it's like no we don't know that and we can't base our entire worldview on that uh because that's not even what the seer of the, of the apparition or the vision would have told us um so that's an, an approved one let's think about if they're not approved um if somebody if, if it's not approved the person has been shown to be a suspect human being what is the chances that they're going to have the right interpretation? <laughs> you know, yeah, so it's, yeah. it's imagination. It's not approved. It might even be from Satan, but here is how to interpret it for real. And you better do this. Otherwise, you know, calamity is going to follow. Um, there also is the threat of, or the, the, the problem of human action may mingle with the divine action, but this again happens even in approved ones. You know, people have images in their minds uh so they're not really sure which is theirs and which is from heaven just totally mm -hmm. legitimate who knows um a true revelation may later be altered by a, by a, a recipient involuntarily okay um people don't have perfect memories they're not given impeccability this is what, what i think happened to sister, sister lucy this is why certain times she would say one thing and sometimes say the other there's no ill will in there uh, but just people get sound bites and they're like, well, she said this. You're ruling out the possibility of the second one of the fake. What do you mean? The fake sister Lucy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're ruling yeah, it yeah, out, yeah. man. I you talked about that eat. on our red pill show. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Haven't yeah. you seen the teeth? Haven't you? Seen yep. <laughs> no one's ever had. Yeah. 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 It's Impossible. funny. I have a, I have a family member who had major jaw and dental surgery growing up so i actually saw someone's face radically change from an underbite situation so i saw that and i was like no the people get like operations like it happens yeah. anyway um that's not my uncle that is not my uncle yeah, yeah. <laughs> no sister lucy is not my uncle um and also yeah people have no idea uh people get People get people are like, why would she get dental surgery? It causes you to have like uh, neck and back issues if your jaw is out of line. So like yeah. it would anyway, it's not a cosmetic thing. It would be a that's a whole other story. I like um, how you mentioned too the the idea that even the seer, it's difficult to differentiate what's a product of their own mind and a product you know of the divine. Mm -hmm. And so if a person is is taking that and they're using it as if it is all divine. Mm -hmm. they may be i mean that's just again that's like the subtlety of things that's the difficulty and the subtlety of of the way that something can be used that would otherwise be okay right mm -hmm. if left to itself in this way but you can take that and then impose that imagery on a narrative that you're advancing and i mean that, that can cause all sorts that's malicious <laughs> at that point it get it things get malicious <laughs> real mm -hmm. quick and mm -hmm. and so i can it's easy to see how that can happen we see that play out um with people with their with with uh private revelations by prophecy right where mm -hmm. they go and they'll they'll say things and and you say well how much of that is because you spoke to my dad <laughs> like how much of that is because you know who i am or you have a desire for something or you heard a pastor say this and you're confirming it because people are listening but if people take that and run wild with it it can cause all sorts of problems yeah yeah you're right um yeah, it's uh, 
this is why again you look at the approved apparitions and uh there's always a reason when you look at it, you go of course this is a real one of course this is how our lady would do it or so forth because it's either to like someone who can't make up the story because they don't know anything about the thing that's being talked about you know like with uh our lady of good success freemasons didn't exist yet and she's talking about Freemasons taking over the highest court in the land or whatever. Yeah. It's like, what's a Freemason? Well, I don't know. Our lady told us, you know, like, <laughs> you know, it, it, it couldn't make it up at the time. It wasn't there. Um, or to small children who don't know what Russia is, uh, yeah. and they think she's a woman, and it's so it's like you didn't make that you don't even know what it is. Um, um, or um very simple, you know, they thought from from as far as I can tell, they thought um St. Bernadette, they thought she was slow. You know, like they thought she was not the sharpest tool in the shed. Um, and so she's talking about these theological truths and they're like, how do you know that? She's like, <laughs> I don't you know. know. I mean, <laughs> you know yeah. Yeah. I was told. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. And it, a lot of that it gets away a lot of the doubt because it's like, well, yeah, I mean, they, they, this is someone who didn't have the ability to activate this in their imagination because they, they would have yeah. no clue what this thing was. Yeah. Um, there's also false apparitions, uh, or sorry, there's the, there is devils give false visions or revelations. Again, Christ warns us of this. The devil can quote scripture. Yeah. So when someone says, you know, well, they're telling us to pray the rosary, it must be from heaven. The devil can quote scripture. So, I mean, is, is uh, yeah, if 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 a certain revelation is causing you to commit various sins. I'm glad you're praying the rosary. Uh, hopefully you'll come back to a state of grace. Um, but if you're living in a state of mortal sin, because a certain revelation is kind of saying certain things are okay, or you're denying certain aspects of the faith, because um, a certain revelation is saying it's okay, then, you know, you might be, you might be in a state of mortal sin praying a rosary. Again, I hope that, I hope that, you know, you put down the sin and, and keep the rosary in your hands, but it might force you to leave at some point. You know, the devil will play the long game. C.S. Lewis and screw tape letters, you know, the, the devil is counseling so-and-so and he's basically saying, you know, you don't have to get someone to do something like murder, you know, playing cards, gambling. We can get someone on that path for their whole life. We'll get them to hell just the same. You know, it's it's a long game. The devil has, he's, he's lives outside of time in a sense, in, in, in a certain way, because he's a, he's a fallen angel. So he doesn't mind if it takes you 35 years to finally to finally go all the way to cuckoo land in increments. Um, he's want you to get there. Yeah. Um, and some and, things that can be objectively good on the one hand can be perverted. Like it, it you know, yeah. what you're saying, Kennedy reminds me of the garden of Eden. Yeah. You know, couldn't, couldn't Eve have said to God, well, isn't eating good. Didn't, yeah. didn't you make fruit for me to eat it? And it yeah. did. The scripture says it appeared good. It was yeah. pleasing to the eyes, you know, mm -hmm. and, you're taking a good thing and in virtue of their disobedience, twisting it into a bad thing. So you're praying a rosary. Okay, great. But your bishop said not to do it according to these instructions or because of this reason. So you're taking an otherwise good thing, right? Which is step one on the cycle of enthusiasm, by the mm -hmm. way. Yeah. And you're, you're yeah. twisting it into something that's going to lead to your destruction little by little, just like you said, over, you know, decades even. Yeah. Even even to be like unto God, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, you're like, yeah, we're actually called, in fact, <laughs> to be like him, um, but not that way. Right. It's through obedience that we're like him. And so like the, the the subtle ways that the devil, the subtlety of the devil in tempting us to do things and to use otherwise good things. Right. Like Paul, when he talks about uh, the law, that if it were not for the law, that he would not have sinned. He's, you know, he's talking. He says. The obvious response from some people that he anticipated would be, well, then the law is evil. And he goes, no, he said it's good, holy, righteous, just. He lists off a whole bunch of things about it. Um, and he's, he's essentially saying that, that you have through this otherwise good vehicle, this thing that is a reflection of the Lord's justice to his chosen people, that it's through that, in fact, that sin became alive in me. Um, and so, again, you see it over and over and over. And. Even the way one of the one of the things, you know, um, I like how obviously I love how you brought up enthusiasm. <laughs> that's like I love it. And you're like, that's the first that's the first step in the cycle. And it's like, yeah. Um, but the thing is, is um, take a group I've thought about recently 
are the individuals that walk around um, down streets. I don't know if it's the Philippines or where they are, where they take uh, very these things and latch themselves and they're bleeding through the streets. They crucify themselves, um, all sorts of things. You say, well, mortification is otherwise a legit thing, <laughs> right? Like they're ranging a whole range of things, right? That, that would be. But when you're out there crucifying yourself in front of people, um, you've taken something <laughs> to another level. And so it's uh, yet again. And the, but the cross is good, too. We, we're to take up our cross every day. Right. And they're like, yes, but that's again, <laughs> you're, you're taking an otherwise good thing too far. And it, it leads you to this place that is, in that sense, self-destructive. I mean, people have died doing that um you know and so like but just the scandal it causes and and the way that it brings disrepute uh, upon the church and and the idea that people can look at that and say well look at what being religious leads you to do <laughs> and you go well that's right you know that's right it yeah. leads people away ultimately because it's cuckoo yeah. and um this is father most for the win he says uh um sometimes satan urges people to immoderate penances so they will give in t in time give up yeah. he may make contemplatives desire the act of life or vice versa blessed jordan of saxony second general of the dominicans contracted a high fever he had a prior skilled a prior skilled in medicine who told him to sleep on a soft bed but satan appeared to jordan in the night and rebuked his self-indulgence jordan gave in to this two nights but the third night jordan saw that he should obey his doctor and so he did. Uh, Jordan had previously put himself under obedience of the doctor. Now, this is important. Um, all conversations about uh, true and false obedience in an in an ecclesial sense aside, when somebody is a cloistered religious, they take a vow of obedience. Mm -hmm. You know, sadly, people they'll say uh, you have to do everything your bishops ever said because here's Saint Therese of Lisieux talking about obedience. It's like, okay, yeah. Um, um, yeah, but in that sense, the yeah. cloistered are supposed to do, they're even supposed to do like, they're basically supposed to do everything unless he tells you to go like shoot yourself in the head. Like they're pretty much supposed to do anything unless it's manifestly insane. Um, so if, 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 if a, if a cloistered religious is doing things that are weird or they leave their cloister or whatever then it's like automatic it's like no that's a situation where obedience is extremely important it's 100 percent important um and that leads to humility um he talks about humility is a major key satan has the greatest horror of it vancouver island nice um and uh so if somebody and this is why i knew this apparition supposed about john paul ii from last week was false there was a lot of reasons why it was false um, and it says it, uh, this false pride, which manifests as humility. You see this all the time. The person is very humble. Why do we know that? Because they said they're only doing this for our lady. It's like, oh, okay. They're humble then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it says it shows in desiring to publish the graces the person thinks he has received when it is not necessary. Daily messages, maybe is that necessary? Um, yeah, humility yeah. leads to wanting to hide them except in cases of real usefulness. He also talks in this about, you need to look at the history of a thing. So let's just say something's going on for a number of years. And there's a lot of predictions made. If you go back and you go, a lot of those didn't come true. Yeah. You, it doesn't mean, again, it could be real apparitions, but they're not literal. And there's like a metaphor there. But then again, they shouldn't be sharing it. You know, and you follow all these steps through and you go, okay, so there's no holiness that follows. It's not approved. Uh, there's no humility because it's daily, literally daily uh, publications. And there's no normal channels. I was looking up one of these priests who's <clears throat> attached to the Medjugorje thing. And he was asked in an interview. This is on their website. He was asked in an interview. Um what will you do when like the time comes where you're supposed to, they're supposed to reveal 10 secrets. It's on a parchment. It's on a parchment. That's not from this world that that sister Mariana will give to this priest, uh, 10 days before the tribulation 
and he'll have to make it known after seven days of fasting or something like that. And um, it's very specific. And the interviewer is like, well, how will you get this message out there out there when it's time? You know, oh, also, Father so-and-so cannot refuse because he's been told by God. And it's like, no, even the Blessed Mother was asked if she would accept the incarnation of God. So that's actually not how this works. Um, but uh, first thing he says, well, I'll, I'll tell my friends. They'll pray for me, and then I'll, I'll use satellite television. So yeah. apparently, Obviously. the tribulation is coming, and... Um, you know, it's three days of darkness or whatever thing they're using for the thing. And and uh, it's necessary for all of the souls of the world to be saved because of the illumination of conscience. Uh, and the channels that Our Lady wants so-and-so to go through with the special parchment from heaven that he has is to use the television. And it's like, you don't... <clears throat> if You don't even have to go into... People will say, well, the first few days were probably true. Even if they were, the thing is rotten. The thing, you know, if you've got so-and-so saying that he's going to, that, that Christ has instructed his mother to tell somebody to use a special parchment with 10 secrets that will be revealed on certain days, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the best way to get that out there is by the TV. Um, we might have a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy, you know, like the way that sometimes, you know, when things, even if they start out good or not, not necessarily malicious, but it just over time builds and builds and builds. It reminds me of this movie called Lie. Um, and, I'm kind of kicking myself for even thinking of talking about it. Cause if people watch, they're going to be mad. I say anything. So there's spoilers alert, right? Spoiler alert. Don't, don't, if you, if you have not seen the movie lie and the lie and you have wanted to see it and you're waiting to see it, do not listen to what I'm going to say for about the next 10 seconds. Um, but it starts out with something mundane, right? Like a, a small thing and builds up and builds up and builds up. And by the end it's, you know, you don't even realize that you've been led along. And boom, it all of a sudden something comes up and you're like, holy cow. But you you see what's required of it as it as it gets deeper and deeper and deeper into this. And it results in this kind of buckling down that we see with individuals like Harold Camping. So Harold Camping is a good case in point. Anybody who's made prophecies of the end times, in fact, for 2000 years has been in this position. <laughs> Every single person. Who is like, oh, yeah, well, this is this is the way it's going to play out, folks. This it's going to happen in our generation. This is going to be the end. And mm -hmm. the more specific they get, the, add them to the list. You can just say, well, I'm adding you right now. <laughs> if, if you end up, you know, you end up being right. Wow, you're the one guy. But there's a long list of people in front of you uh, who've messed it up and, and, and done this. And those, you know, some of them walk away in shame. Some of them uh, just simply take the video offline and then reformat it a couple years later and then pitch it as if it's never been said before. Um, that sort of stuff happens all the time. And, you know, it's, I'm glad for shows like this, and I'm glad for work that you're doing, Kennedy. You're doing awesome stuff, by the way, man. That, that video that he was talking about that he did, um, about the apparition, people got to go watch it. I was watching it actually either last night or this morning, uh, early <laughs> or late, <laughs> however you want to look at it. Um, and just, just awesome work, man. Uh, and to go over and make sure to subscribe, on his on his youtube channel right and so make sure the kennedy to report yep kennedy report. right yeah, yeah. yep it's good i stuff. wanted to i wanted to share something too before because i know we, we're about 53 minutes here um i just wanted to share this a couple things so i'll share the screen here i wish there's a way i can just well i guess i can i'll share the window here let's see okay uh let's see yeah i'll just share this why not okay so no, no, I can't do that. <laughs> never mind. Hold on. Let me stop sharing that. Okay. Let me share. Let me go back to this. I, I've never, I've never hosted one of these by myself here. So, okay. We'll do the Chrome tab and we will do, let's see. So, okay. I told you earlier that there was a, um, a situation with this, with, uh, where I said that these people were doing these prayers having to do with the, uh, the medium. Right. And how someone could tune into this and say, OK, cr a crusade for prayer, daily prayers, prepare for the second coming. And they could see this. I know a lot of otherwise very devout and pious trads who might see this and think, 
that this is something totally cool and not realizing that the message that this individual is connected to is actually one that was pitched by a medium by a lady complete a complete fraud and here's another one this one might not be this one might not be so um subtle <laughs> it might not be so subtle we're gonna find out here we're gonna do this okay but it, it does have some some symbols here let's see if it plays sound through it tell me if you guys can hear this you know it's a newsletter and it could prove to you can you hear that, that at all uh, yes yeah, so I saw this, looking for this, okay? So you say, oh, my, the emerging new Chinese superpower. But this cat here. We're in trouble <laughs> because they're about to come to America. <laughs> okay. <and get> you. <laughs> okay. I had to show that because I, I saw this cat. It's got to be legit. Though. Look, he's got our lady right there. I mean, that's... Look, I've got the same thing going on right here. This is how you know I'm legit, right? Kennedy's got it. <laughs> Okay. Clearly, I'm gonna just I'm gonna mute this bad boy and just play in the background because this, <laughs> this dude has this dude here. Look at this screen, okay? <clears throat> if you see anything like this at this level, I'm okay? Figure, yeah, oh, yeah. he's got it. I mean, this is <laughs> yeah. If you see this right here at, at this level, did he show a Fatima Crusader thing? Yeah. yeah. Ah, well, that's oh, yeah. but you know what? Again, right to fix sometimes this people people take a, a good thing sometimes and they use it in bad ways. And you say, look, they're using they're using Fatima, you know, that it's what this is about. So these guys, a lot of times, I mean, this guy's just saying some of the most cuckoo junk. But I mean, if you just look at the screen, guys, just for a second, just absorb that and just know that whenever you see anything like this, just run like the Dickens does. Don't <laughs> you don't even if it's like, well, he had some good information. I promise you, you can find it without all the cuckoo bird nonsense by going to other channels like, for example, Kennedy Hall's channel. Or meaning of Catholic, or you can see me and Jake over at meaning of Catholic, and so well, the, is this yeah. is from Nesita? Is that from Wisconsin, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's from Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. So Father Most actually mentions that one in here. <laughs> he Dude, Nesita, that's Nesita. the that's the place where Archbishop Moynihan, I think, is from. Is that really the case? Yeah, yeah. His, that that video that I showed mm -hmm. that that with the the Archbishop and at the mass and stuff. Um, that I think that same video is him at the shrine of Nasita and he's talking about the shrine. So it's okay. literally yeah. the paradigm case. Oh, this is all connected, man. <laughs> literally our, <laughs> our studies have all converged. You look at this. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's all um, come together. He says, you know? uh, we're here. We need to watch out for the work of Satan. He may really promote good things for a while, provided that in the long run he gains. The revelations at Nacida, Wisconsin, seemed to have good fruits, yet were false. Rosaries were said to change to gold. Similarly for Bayside, I guess that's Our Lady of America, isn't it? Um, but obedience showed them false. Disobedience. Um, St. Mary, Margaret Mary was told by our Lord, and this is uh, Sacred Heart. Listen, my daughter, and do not lightly believe and trust every spirit, for Satan is angry and will try to deceive you. So do nothing without the approval of those who guide you. Being thus under the authority of obedience, his efforts against you will soon will be in vain, for he has no power over the obedient. <laughs> the only problem there is a lot of times today people will seek out spiritual direction and their priest is into something wacky. So that's, you know, that's difficult. But anyway, um, before we close out here, um, what do you think, Jake? Oh man, so many things, and you know this is that Any profound thing. I don't, I don't want to keep. Well, I don't know how profound they are, but I don't want to keep, you know, beating this drum. But just to to remain within the bounds that Holy Mother Church has set for mm us, right? We don't need to seek uh, to receive private revelation. We don't need to seek after <laughs> other alleged private revelations, because again, you, you know, all the things we mentioned before, especially regarding confirmation bias, you know, there was a comment, uh, Maria was asking which video, you know, we got her the link, but for anyone else who was curious, Kennedy a few days ago did a video about this alleged revelation of St. John Paul II to some cloistered nun. And immediately it was made public and there was no investigation that we know of. And anyhow, so you know, because we hear what they say and we'd like it to be true, that becomes a, a point of 
well, it's dangerous. Let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. And th this is the same kind of attitude. Yeah, there it is. Uh, this is the same kind of attitude when somebody's like, well, I have read the Bible and I have determined that it means X mm -hmm. and the church has said it means Y, but I'm right because God told me. Yeah. Right. Or I have read the history. You know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm no scholar, right? I'm trying to be, I'm not quite there yet. Um, but I've got buddies who they're like, well, if you knew the history of Vatican II, you would change your mind. I'm like, I don't really need to know the history of the secret CIA, this and that, to know that it was an ecumenical council approved by Rome. So whatever good or bad, like we just have to take the good with the bad, you know, and I don't need to step outside of the bounds of, again, ecclesiastical approval. So you know, those are just kind of the thoughts rolling around in my head that there, there's nothing new under the sun and we have everything we need. Oh, one thing I did want to add. The reason it's called private revelation, or at least one reason, is because it's given for a certain people at a certain time. Mm -hmm. um, it, compared to public revelation, which was for all people of all time. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's that's really the difference. So when we're trying to look back or look forward to events that are going to happen, it's like, well, again, how do we know we're interpreting them properly? And does this cohere with what our Lord said in the Gospels, what the apostles taught? That's the reason Fatima is so important, is because it relays to us the truths of the faith. It's not because it's some parallel message, right? Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm done ranting. It's good. It's good. Yeah. I like yeah. it. I like that about Fatima too. I, I say that it, it even co it even coalesces with what uh, Pius the Tenth, uh, Pope Saint Pius the Tenth, talked about in his rather optimistic, borderline triumphalistic encyclical, mm -hmm. uh, restoring all things in Christ, uh, the King, uh, in the restoration of all things. In that encyclical, the arc of history is optimistic. It's the it's the Christianizing of the world. Yeah. Um, is what it is. And so there's been people who put an antithesis between Our Lady and uh, Pope St. Pius X. And I say, nope. Say, you know, you know, you're you're doing bad because because it, otherwise it'd be like, well, that was, I guess it's just bad timing. But that kind of plays into this naturalistic. That's right. Kind he of would thing. have better insight than you. He would. Have yeah, he'd have better insight. insight and like it, as if it's a matter of timing, like, well, this is what uh, the Holy Ghost was preserving and everything and instructing and leading the church. And, oh, if only I would have known the timing. I wish Our Lady would have told me. Like, uh, give me a break. You know, so we don't. That's not how Catholics believe. That's not how we think. And so it's easier to see the continuity and the harmony of those two things than the end, the antithesis of those two things and the discontinuity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Yeah. All right. Well, we should end with a cold close because we started with a cold open. And then this will be just in infamy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're just going to end it literally right now. <laughs>